If you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I have been less than complimentary to Blue Origin, and in my opinion, for very good reason. A company with billions of dollars worth of backing, a company that's been in existence for over two decades, indeed even longer than SpaceX has been in business, and yet they have still never made it to orbit. Although this hasn't stopped them from suing anybody who has denied them a contract as if they were a long-established orbital launch provider. Something that I've found to be a little distasteful, something that I think needs to be backed up with some action, with some actual results. But in about six weeks, Blue Origin is going to have the opportunity to change that perception. This is their moment of truth. If the new Glenn rocket is at least successful enough to deliver the escapade mission to Mars, if it can carry out at least that much of its mission, that will be enough to establish Blue Origin as a key player in the launch provider industry, somebody who could legitimately take on SpaceX in the future. And if Blue Origin manages to stick the landing with the new Glenn booster on the first attempt, something that they are hoping to do, this will be an even bigger accomplishment for this company. A huge leap forward from a company that is yet to deliver anything to orbit. And all of a sudden, New Glenn and Blue Origin will become a competitor to be feared in this industry. That being the case, though, if Blue Origin accomplishes neither of these objectives, nothing will change for this company, aside from the fact that they will continue to exist with a billionaire backer who's willing to sue everybody without any real results. On August 18, 2024, Rocket Lab delivered the two spacecraft for NASA's escapade mission to the Astrotech Space Operations Facility in Titusville, Florida, in preparation for launch next month. They will fly on a highly anticipated debut of Blue Origin's New Glenn rocket, a rocket that has been plagued with delay after delay and recently a couple of costly accidents that allegedly destroyed the upper stages of two rockets, but not the rockets that were supposed to carry the escapade payload. So they are set to launch no earlier than October 13th from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. They'll arrive in Mars orbit in September of 2025 on a mission to study how incoming charged particles from the sun interact with and alter the planet's magnetic field and magnetic environment. The two explorers could paint a far more detailed picture of how Mars' interaction with the solar wind influences the leaking of the planet's thin atmosphere. And so many things that we've discovered lately have challenged what we once thought we knew about the Martian atmosphere and the Martian environment in general. It was previously thought that the Martian oceans evaporated into a gradually thinning atmosphere and the constant bombardment of the solar wind against a planet that had no significant magnetic field eventually stripped the planet of most of its atmosphere and virtually all of its water. We have, however, discovered over the last several years that Mars has far more water than we ever thought, including trillions of tons of ice just below the surface and far more water, approximately 10 kilometers beneath the surface. Enough water to cover the entire surface of the planet in an ocean about 2 kilometers deep. If Mars has this much water left over, then how much of it did it really lose? The successful delivery of the spacecraft marks a significant milestone and the culmination of over three years of dedicated teamwork from individuals across the project, according to Escapade Principal Investigator Rob Lillis. Now we're thrilled to embark on this first step of our journey to Mars. However, Rocket Lab and the rest of the team might not be quite so enthusiastic as they once were, because these spacecraft were supposed to be carried on a Falcon Heavy as part of another mission. 
the mission to 16 Psyche. However, technical problems led to that mission being delayed until October of 2023, and by that time, Mars was out of position to drop off the two spacecraft at the Red Planet, and there were no alternatives aside from reassigning the escapade mission to another rocket. And that rocket ended up being the maiden flight of New Glenn. Now, the price is definitely right. According to a recent press release, the total cost for sending this mission to Mars is $80 million, and only $20 million of that price tag is made up of the new Glenn launch. Obviously, Blue Origin is cutting NASA a huge deal on this particular launch. I can't imagine that new Glenn is going to be able to fly for $20 million mission after mission, but for this one, NASA is not not taking too much of a financial risk. However, Rocket Lab has a lot riding on these spacecraft, and I'm pretty sure that they're not 100% happy that their spacecraft are riding on a brand new rocket as opposed to the good old reliable Falcon Heavy. By the way, this particular animation was created by Hayes Gray Art. I'm not going to show you the entire clip. It has some amazing audio as well, and if you want to see the whole thing, well, you're just going to have to go over to his YouTube channel. So why is New Glenn such a big deal? Well, three reasons. Fairing size, fairing size, and fairing size. As you can see, the payload capability, at least if we're talking about volume, is so much bigger than Falcon 9, or even Falcon Heavy's extended fairing whenever they come out with that, that it really gives New Glenn a massive advantage over SpaceX's reliable workhorse rocket. Now, in theory, Falcon Heavy can carry more payload mass wise to low Earth orbit than New Glenn can. However, it's never actually going to be able to do that because you could never fit 60 metric tons worth of mass inside of Falcon Heavy's little fairing. Even the extended fairing could probably not carry that much mass. New Glenn is going to have a massive advantage over the Falcon series in every conceivable way. The only advantage that Falcon Heavy will possess is is perhaps geosynchronous orbit cargoes or cargoes to the moon but once again volume wise New Glenn will still have the edge it's only Starship that's going to allow SpaceX to take another leap ahead of Blue Origin at least in theory but you need to keep a number of things in mind sure Starship can carry a hundred metric tons up to orbit whereas New Glenn can only take 45 or at least that's the published capabilities of both rockets. But how long is it going to be before the market is going to have a need for more than 40 metric tons in a single launch? Up to this point, the market hasn't come anywhere close to that requirement, and it's not likely to any time in the near future. And even though Starship is supposed to be incredibly inexpensive because of the stainless steel, because of the inexpensive nature of the engines, that sort of thing, if we assume the same level of reusability with both rockets, and it could be that New Glenn has a reusability advantage simply because it utilizes higher quality materials, more sophisticated materials, materials that may be able to bear up under repeated uses more often than Starship will be able to. Keep in mind that we haven't actually seen a reused Starship yet, so it's difficult to tell how reusable these Raptor engines are really going to be. As amazing as they are, we haven't seen any sort of reusability demonstrated by these engines, or by the BE-4 for that matter, so it's kind of an open question. But nevertheless, if New Glenn can hold up the same level of reusability that Starship does, and it takes a lot less infrastructure to launch it, because keep in mind, you have to clear out a very large area for Starship because it's such an absolutely massive rocket. And as time goes on with the environmental concerns, the noise pollution,
pollution concerns and other things that Starship has had to struggle with lately. The cost per launch may not be quite as cheap as Elon hopes, at least not with the first launches. And also keep in mind that New Glenn, if it does actually successfully deploy this escapade payload, will be a fully mature and operational rocket, whereas Starship will not be. Starship will not have a fully operable capability until it's using Raptor 3s and until they're catching the booster, until they do quite a number of things that probably aren't going to happen in Flight 5 or even in Flight 6. Whereas if New Glenn can actually stick the landing on Flight 1, if they can actually be fully operational and successful on the first flight, and yeah, that's a very tall order, and I'm not sure how likely that's actually going to be, then Blue Origin will have a substantial lead all of a sudden, going from a company that sent nothing to orbit to a company that can send more into orbit than any of its competitors. Now, if New Glenn doesn't stick the landing, then all they have is an expendable rocket with a very big fairing, which, when you come right down to it, isn't all that different than SLS. Now, I'm sure it's probably going to be less expensive to launch than SLS, but until they can actually reuse that booster, until they can actually stick the landing, which took many attempts by Falcon 9 before they actually had that process mastered, New Glenn is not going to have the competitive edge that I'm sure Jeff Bezos is hoping they're going to have by the end of the year. And even worse, if they fail to stick the landing and fail to deliver the payload, well, this is a company that has a long ways to go, and a company that will have proven that step-by-step step ferociously is not a guaranteed path to success. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and please consider supporting me on Patreon. I now have seven exclusive videos for Patreon members, and I'm about to add an eighth in the next few days. And In addition, you'll be helping me get across the Atlantic to cover the Crew 9 mission, so please check the description for details. Thanks again for watching, and as always, stay angry about space.